one of the main missions for the James Webb Space Telescope is to try to discover first stars in the universe. The so-called Population 3 stars that scientists believe existed billions of years ago and, over time, led to the formation of other stars that we usually refer to as Population 2. And because these first stars would be made out of pristine hydrogen, and because they could also get to extremely large and massive sizes, various types of models have already established what we should be seeing if we actually ever find these stars. Specifically here, we would be looking at regions with some of the hottest objects known to us, possibly at least 120,000 Kelvin and at least 50 solar masses. And these types of stars would also cause tremendous illumination of gas around these stars, forcing this gas to basically shine super, super bright. And while it turns out that extremely recently, researchers might have actually discovered something super unusual in a galaxy far, far away. By once again conducting very detailed observations with the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists discovered the galaxy you see right here, GS and DG 9422. A galaxy at a redshift of 6 or essentially existing when the universe was only approximately 1 billion years old. But in this case, something was super unusual. The light coming from this galaxy was not really coming from stars. Turns out that most of the light in this galaxy is essentially glowing gas, similar to a typical fluorescent lamp. Something was causing the gas in this galaxy to glow super, super bright, much, much brighter than any star in it. And this was super strange. And almost right away, the initial assumption was that, okay, maybe we finally found them. Maybe this is actually the result of these first stars or population three stars. And maybe the James Webb Space Telescope finally discovered them. And well, how wonderful person this is Anton, Let's discuss this galaxy in a little bit more detail, find out what's actually happening here, or at least what we think is happening, but also let's start with a little bit of history. Let's go back 20 years. 20 years ago, when the telescopes were still not as developed, researchers got super lucky by observing something with the Hubble Space Telescope and discovered an unusual formation we now refer to as the Lynx Arc. This was actually only detected because of powerful gravitational lensing effects but in essence, it revealed something super strange. It revealed what seemed to be the hottest known star birthing region in the entire universe. The region at the redshift of 3.4, or when the universe was about 1.8 billion years old, and the region that seemed to contain millions of O-type stars with masses over 50 solar masses. In contrast, the nearest star forming region with a lot of massive stars near us is right here. This is the Tarantula Nebula, and here we actually only have only a few hundred similar stars. Some of the most massive and some of the brightest stars are all found right here. Yet the Lynx arc seemed to suggest something several thousand times more powerful and of course more massive. A region approximately one million times brighter than a typical nebula and a region that was also much much hotter than anything we've ever seen. Which is why it was named the hottest region in the observable universe. Now, we don't actually know what it looks like, because it's kind of far from us, but this was an artistic representation. And well, back then, this was assumed to be something that was very likely extremely common in a lot of these early galaxies. It was referred to as the furious firestorm of star birth, a kind of a possibly short-lived stage where in many different galaxies it would suddenly become extremely bright and extremely powerful, possibly lasting for several million years. And though at first this was assumed to be population 3 stars as well, it turned out to be something different. Here, an average star temperature was only about 80,000 Kelvin, which is, though much hotter than what we usually find in a typical galaxy, was definitely not as hot as population 3 stars are expected to be. But this was still a really important discovery of the first super hot region, producing an enormous amount of ionizing radiation, very likely powering a lot of nearby nebula, and causing them to have certain effects. And up until this point, this remained to be the only such example. But now the scientists discovered something that seems to be possibly even more extreme. The study by Alex Cameron and his team revealed not just a single star forming region, but the entire galaxy, where the gas from nebula outshines all of the stars. And this extremely strong nebular emission currently does not have a very good explanation. 
Now there are some explanations, but overall we basically have no idea what's really happening here or which model seems to be correct. But the biggest question is, could this finally be the sign of these population 3 stars, first stars in the universe? Well, the researchers behind this paper don't believe so, and for really just one main reason. The overall spectral emissions, even though it seems to suggest metal-poor stars, still seems to come from stars of second population, because a lot of them show a lot of chemical complexity and various elements not expected to be present in the first stars. Nevertheless, these emissions are also different from a typical star or from stars we're usually familiar with. In other words, these are still exotic stars and can actually help us understand how galaxies transition from primordial versions to a lot of modern galaxies or help us understand what happened in these early galaxies in the first billion years. And so after a several months long analysis, we now know just a little bit more about what's happening here. And so once again we have these really high temperatures, with very hot stars possibly 100,000 Kelvin in temperature, which is hotter than previously detected Lynx arc, but not as hot as population 3 stars, with a lot of these stars producing huge amounts of ionizing radiation that seems to power an extremely bright glow from a lot of gas in a galaxy. And weirdly enough, all of this glow dramatically outshines all of the stars in this galaxy and everything else around it. But obviously in this case, it was not entirely clear if it's actually stars doing this. One of the first assumptions was that maybe this was a central black hole that's basically causing all of the gas around it to glow super bright. And technically this is still one of the potential explanations, but the emissions coming from here don't resemble a typical black hole. Whereas other models trying to explain this using some kind of a reflection or possibly some kind of a structure around the star do not explain everything as well. But if this is coming from extremely hot stars surrounded by a typical gas in a typical galaxy, a lot of the emissions seem to match the observations almost exactly. And so here we have a typical low density and low metallicity environment usually found in various nebula, but with ridiculously high temperatures, extremely likely powered by very hot, very massive stars which basically results in the production of never-before-seen light spectrum coming from a distant galaxy. And so gas outshining stars caused by the stars themselves seems to be the best explanation. Which of course confirms some of the earlier predictions as well. We expect early universe to contain a lot of massive hot stars in very large numbers and in somewhat tight arrangements with many of these stars forming specific regions that would then cause reionization of the entire universe by producing enormous amount of energy. But as we know today, these environments can actually no longer exist just because the universe transformed so much. And so in the local universe, a typical hot massive star is only going to be about 40 to maybe 50,000 Kelvin as opposed to 100,000 detected here. And we're also unlikely to see millions of these stars in the same star forming region like we see in this galaxy. But because this is the only such object discovered by the James Webb, it's assumed to be a relatively brief phase that's most likely going to stop within a few million years. But because this is also one of the predictions about population 3 stars, or potentially also explains why the early universe seems to be so different from the modern universe, because of studies like this, we're actually only getting closer and closer to various solutions in regards to the beginning of the universe, the formation of early stars, and the evolution of early galaxies. And so, so far, despite of these anomalous discoveries, everything to date kind of actually makes sense. And you can actually learn about some of these previous mysteries that were at first unusual and eventually explained in some of the videos in the description. And so until future discoveries or until something else is discovered about this galaxy, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.